Hey everyone, today's lesson is using the Pythagorean theorem to find missing side lengths. So you're definitely going to need to grab a calculator today and a pencil. And this is the page that we're going to be working on. So if you have your lesson worksheet, take that out now and follow along. And if not, you can still follow along to see some really great examples and learn how to use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so the problem is, use the Pythagorean theorem to find the missing side lengths of triangle ABC. Now, first of all, before we start, the Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's underline or highlight this formula because we're gonna be using this formula a lot in this topic. We use the Pythagorean theorem to find side lengths, missing side lengths of right triangles. Sometimes we find a missing leg, I'll explain that in a second, and then sometimes we find the missing hypotenuse. Now, this theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, only works with right triangles. So I think that's important to underline that as well because if you don't have a right triangle, if you don't see this little right angle symbol in the corner here, that means that the Pythagorean theorem is not going to work. As we know, a triangle has three sides. We've got two legs and we have a hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse is always the easiest side to identify because it's the longest side and it's opposite or across from the right angle. So here's my right angle. And if I were to look at the side that's across from it, this is the hypotenuse where this little question mark is here. So I'm gonna label this side as the hypotenuse. These other two sides that form the right angle are called the legs. So this is a leg, and this is a leg. Now anytime we're finding a missing side and using the Pythagorean theorem, the first thing is always to write this equation. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Always, always, always start with that. And then we're going to fill in the values that we have. It says replace the variables with the two side lengths that you know. Well, we've got two legs here. The legs are always gonna go in the A and the B place. I've got a five and I've got a 12. It doesn't matter what order I put them in. I can put the five first and then the 12, or I can go the other way and do the 12 first and then the five. But what I can't do is put the 12 or the five in the place of C, because C is always the hypotenuse. I'm gonna make a little note of that, right? And that makes sense because it's the longest side. If you're adding two things together, you're always gonna get a bigger answer than those two when you're using positive numbers, which we always will be when we're talking about right triangles. So I'm gonna bring down the C squared here. So I've got five squared plus 12 squared equals C squared, and now it's time to do a little math. Five squared is 25, 12 squared is 144, and that's gonna equal C squared. We're going to take the 25 and the 144 and add those together. It's going to give me 169 equals c squared. And then the last step is going to be to undo c to the second power. Well, the inverse of putting a number to the second power is finding the square root. I've got a little note of that down here, right? The opposite or inverse of squaring a number is finding its square root. So I want to make sure I do that on both sides of my equation. The square root of c squared is just c and the square root of 169 is 13. So this missing side length is 13 inches. All right, let's move on to the bottom portion of our page. Now, if you're feeling kind of good about this and you wanna try one on your own, why don't you try number one right now? You can stop the video. And if you feel like you need some more time, you wanna look at me and do another one, watch one more example, then do that. Okay, so we are gonna start with our Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. I'm gonna look at my triangle and see what I have going on here, right? I'm asking myself, do I have two legs or do I have a leg and a hypotenuse? Well, here's my right angle. These two sides are forming that right angle. So that means that these are both legs. This is a leg, this is a leg. And remember, that side that's across from the right angle is the hypotenuse. So this is another example where we're gonna be finding the hypotenuse, and remember the hypotenuse is always in the place of C. The eight and the 20 can go in place of A and B, doesn't matter what order I put them in. So I'm just gonna do the eight first and then the 20. 
that's going to equal c squared. 8 squared is 64. 20 squared is 400 equals c squared. We're going to add the 64 and the 400 together to get 464. And then our last step is going to be to undo c to the second power. So we're going to find the square root on each side. Now, 464 is not a perfect square, so we're going to get an estimate for our answer, and we're going to round this to the nearest tenth. Because I'm rounding, I'm not going to use a regular equal sign. I'm going to use a little squiggle, and I'm going to break out my calculator right now and figure out what the square root of 464 is. So I get a really long decimal when I do this. I have 21.54065923. I'm going to round this to the nearest tenth, because that's what it said to do in the directions up here. So I'm going to make that a 21.5. So the length of this side would be 21.5 centimeters. You can even write that on there, 21.5 centimeters. Okay, this next example is a little bit different because this time, if you notice, we've got a measure for our hypotenuse and we haven't had this before. So I'm going to start with my formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And when I label my sides, when I ask myself, do I have two legs or a leg and a hypotenuse, this time, look what's happening here. There's my right angle. And right across from it, I have a measure this time for my hypotenuse. So I know what the c is. The c is going to be 61. And these two are my legs, the two that make the right angle. So 11 is a leg. And this side over here that I need to find is a leg. So when I replace these values, I have to make sure that that hypotenuse, that value, goes in place of C. That's the most, one of the most important things about this theorem. So I'm going to make sure I put that 61 over here in place of the C. The 11 can go in either place, A or B. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to leave the A a variable. I'll put the 11 in place of B. And then I'm going to replace C with 61. And again, I could easily put the 11 here in place of A and leave this one, the variable, as B. It doesn't matter. All right, time to start figuring this out. 11 squared is 121. Now, 61 squared, I don't know about you, but I have no idea what 61 squared is. So I'm going to break out my calculator, and it is 3,721. All right, now this problem, when I solve, it's a little different, right? Because I've got something over here on the same side of the equal sign as my variable. So I'm going to have to cancel this 121 first. So let's subtract 121 from each side. And when I do that, I'm going to get a squared equals 3,721 minus 121 is 3,600, right? 3,600. Now, when I do my square root on each side, this is actually a perfect square. I know it's a big number, but it is a perfect square because 6 times 6 is 36. So that means 60 times 60 would be 3,600. So this missing leg up here is 60 meters. All right, let's do one more example. Again, I'm always going to start with this Pythagorean theorem, right? Always write the equation. It's a good habit to get into. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And let's take a look at what we have here. We have to ask ourselves, do we have two legs or do we have a leg and a hypotenuse? If we're not sure, go to that right angle. Look straight across from it. That's going to show you where your hypotenuse is. So 16 is the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is always the c. Right? I know I keep writing it over and over again, but I really want that to sink in. These other two sides that make the right angle are our legs. So this is a leg that we need to find, and this 13 is the other leg. When I replace these values, I definitely want to make sure I put that 16 here in place of C. And then I can put this 13 in the A spot or the B. Right? It doesn't matter. So since I put it in place of B over here, in our second problem, I'll put it in place of A this time, just to show you how it really doesn't matter. Just want to make sure that we're putting it in place of one of those legs. So 13 to the second power is 169 plus B squared. And then 16 to the second power is 256. 
And if you're not sure about that, of course, break out a calculator. Now again, since we're finding a leg, I'm going to have to subtract this 169 because before I can find the square root, I have to make sure that b squared is all by itself. So I'm going to subtract 169 from each side. And you might want to break out your calculator for that, but 256 minus 169 is 87. And then we're going to do the square root on each side. Now, 87 is not a perfect square, so I'm not going to use an equal sign, right? I'm going to be rounding this. I'm going to use a little squiggle. So we'll do the square root, and of course I'm using my calculator because I don't know what this is. And the decimal turns out to be 9.32737, blah, blah, blah. So I'm going to round that to approximately 9.3. So that means this missing leg up here is about 9.3 feet. All right, hopefully this was helpful with using the Pythagorean theorem. If you have any questions, be sure to ask me in class tomorrow or ask your teacher. We're always happy to help. And I will see you soon.